traffic guys today we are flying from Garoka to Wewak. It's an hour and 15 minute flight. First flight of the day. Got about four more flights after that but I thought I'd take you along on just today's flight. All right, everything is reading zeros. Bolts are good. Bring this up to 14% at least. Go ahead and introduce our fuel. Watching our ITT. As it comes up, our NG is past 35. Watching the arrows. Nice cool start at 560. Have them pull off the cart. Okay, generator and alternator on. Ox bus on. Go ahead and put our prop max. Turn the air off a little bit, but still want some air in here, otherwise it gets really stuffy. Anyways guys, my name is Ryan, and like I said, we are going to WeWack today. And, uh, looks like we'll have an instrument departure. I am empty though, so it looks like I actually might be able to get up over top of those clouds over there. Alright, so today we're going to be using at 1-2000, I believe. Yep, 1-2000. Check our weights for our rotate speed. 5,500 5, pounds, so we're going to rotate at 55 and 64 if we need to come back in for a landing. So I'm going to set her up here. And 55, my V-climb. That'll be my rotate speed. Go ahead, get ahead and give tower a quick call. We don't have ground here. Good morning, Groga Tower, November Tango Kilo. Request taxi, WeWAC, amended destination, WeWAC, one POV. November Tango Kilo, Groga Tower, morning, so stand by. I was supposed to go to Medang today first with some passengers and then on to WeWAC, but things just recently changed, as always. And uh, I'm now scheduled to go to WeWAC. I kilo negative, flight plan details. I had a flight plan to Medang, then on to WeWAC, and they just changed my schedule on me this morning. And that passenger is no longer here, so I'm going on to WeWAC at this time. November thing was kilo copied, and I just go ahead with your details. My uh, outbound track will be initially for the Osaloka Gap, then on to Mayui, Wewak. Outbound track from, our uh, standby. All right, so, outbound track to Mayui be 320, and then again 320 on to Wewak, 12000, November 10 kilo. November 10 kilo copied. The taxi runway one seven uh, left in the vector lineup one zero two one. One zero two one clear to backtrack lineup one seven left November Tango Kilo. We got our taxi light on, throw our strobes and our landing light on as well as we roll onto the runway. Go both ways, they are clear. As we head up this tiny little hill, we're gonna go ahead and do our governor check. Release the button, and use the rise, looks good. Throw our ignition on. All right, if we do need to stop on the runway for any reason, it is gonna be full reverse, heavy braking. If going off for any reason, cut off, pull off, and shut off. After takeoff, if we have any, any problems, reach for 85, consider EPL, consider feather. Both those don't work. 80 full flaps, cut off, pull off, shut off, hit our emergency button. Full tower, let them know what we're doing, and straight ahead. It is uh, scattered to broken fog out this morning, so we are going to do an instrument departure. Probably just the first leg, I could actually probably out climb it, it looks like. So we'll see once we turn around. But more than likely, we'll just go IMC just for, at most, probably even a minute. And uh, 
Then we'll take a look at what the rest of the valley looks like and determine if we need to go up to our safe altitude before we head out over those mountains or if we can get out visually. Right, we've got our switches and instruments done. Our flaps are set at 20. We have our trims set up. Already done our abort. Our ignition. Inlet is on bypass. Landing lights, pulse lights on now. Harness, high idle. We've already done our governor check. Have everything go kilo rate for takeoff. November Tingle Kilo one seven left. And our ten as re ten as required, cleared for takeoff. Clear for takeoff trans required, November Tango Kilo. Alright, ignition condition flaps twenty and fuel is on. Harnesses are locked. Now looking at it, I don't think I'm gonna be able to outmaneuver it, but so we're just gonna go ahead and pop through the cloud for this one and once we're on the other side. We'll go from there. Temperature is twenty today, so takeoff power is gonna be thirteen ninety for 1440. All right, our speed is alive. Is our rotate speed. Bring our RTT up to 740 for takeoff power. It looks like I might almost be able to stay visual. I probably could if I just made a quick turn right here, but we'll just pop through it just for simplicity's sake. All right. Once we're over 85 and continuing to climb, reduce our flaps to 10 degrees. Over 90, I'll reduce down to zero flaps. starting to pop out and bring our pops back down to the bottom of the end. It's going to give us 2,000 RPMs. Our D starting to drop back down to 720, which is our high mount. Take that autopilot off for a second so I can my climb rate up. All right, let's write our details down. So departed to 5-4. about 40 minutes, so let's say 3-5, because I'm not 100% sure. 3 0 one 2 Rocket Tower, November, Tango, Kilo, departed time. 5-4, we'll be tracking 3 2 zero for my UE on climb that above 1-2000. Let's bring overhead my UE time 3-5. November, Tango, Kilo, copied 1-2000. And uh, in the Saluka, Median, 1-2-0, one, no contact 6598, 6538, or 3 which is zero decimal one in the Oslo Loco, six five nine eight or three eight or three four one nine or Nova per tango kilo. Alright, lots of people to call. <laughs> Alright, so it's actually looking exactly like I was expecting out. Just a low layer of fog, lots of scuzzy clouds, and uh, we're at eight thousand right now. The field was at five thousand, so right around three thousand. It is really nice out. Looks like it's gonna have a uh, I have an overcast day today and uh, expecting just kind of a lot of clouds overall today.
All right, let's go ahead and clear that out of there. Put our big map page. As you can see right here, uh, our altimeter is flashing. Once we pass 7,000 feet, just gives us a quick reminder that we are set to our local Q&H, which is just your ATIS. If you're not familiar overseas, they use Q&H um, instead of, well, to be honest, I don't even remember it's been so many years. So that's basically your barometric pressure. So right now, if it, it was at set at one two or 1021, you're looking at 30 decimal two two, just for reference for your sake. Anyways, we're going up to 12,000 feet. Might as well just put our autopilot on. Before I forget my train of thought, what I was going to do is actually turn this down 10 notches. That's 1011 now. We had it set to our local Q&H, which is the airport. And anytime we get out of the airport area, we put it down to about 10 notches. And... That is going to give us our area Q and H is what we fly around with. All right, guys. So, like I said, my name is Ryan, and uh, this is a new video format that I am going to be trying. Um, not really sure if it's going to be interesting to anybody or not, but I wanted to try something different. Some people had requested, you know, that I put more videos out and. Uh, I think we have a pretty cool job what we do here. Flying in the mountains, flying into mountain strips, doing a lot of kind of IFR, back to VFR, through the mountains. And it's just a lot different than what you would get in America. Uh, so I thought I'd make some videos just so you can see what it looks like, kind of a, my thought process throughout the day on how I make decisions here and what it is like to fly in a different country other than America. Things are a little bit different. Not terribly different, but there are just a couple things that are different, and I wanted to share those with you. So if you like this kind of content, I'd really love your comments to let me know if this is something that you're interested in actually watching, or if it sucks, then let me know that too, just so I don't waste my time making these videos. But I think there are some people out there that would be interested in, in what we do, whether they're interested in mission aviation, or if they're just interested in maybe bush flying, or if they're just interested in aviation in general. There's not a lot of, I guess, flight vlogs out there. There's a few out there. There's just not a ton. So anyways, like I said, leave a comment down below if you are interested in this stuff and you'd like to see more, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I do put out new videos. There is a decent response. People actually enjoy watching these. I will continue to make them. And probably what I'll be doing is just making them whenever I have flights just by myself. Typically I fly with people. But like today, I'm flying to WeWAC just by myself. I don't have anybody with me, and those are the ones that I think would be the easiest for me to make the videos with, the le with less distraction. So what we do here in flying around mountains and a lot of kind of IFR and out of IFR and a lot of marginal VFR, I don't really need to be messing around with cameras and things like that very much. So I'm trying to make this as easily, I guess, as... Uh, low stress and, and low maintenance as possible but I also would like to make it interesting for people right now I'm borrowing GoPros I have two myself and I'm borrowing two one's not working today I, ha I hope to have one out maybe on the wing or just facing out but it didn't turn on this morning so anyways um, yeah in the future I would like to to get maybe a camera out on the wing I have I've done it before I put one on the tail before but Again, I'm trying to make this as, how would you put it, uh, manageable as possible so I can just jump in the plane, throw the GoPros where I know they work, and go from there. All right, now that we're up at cruise, 1-2000, we're going to go ahead and bring our torque back down to 1250. Our props are set at 2000 RPM. Again, hopefully I'll be able to get another camera so you can see more of what I'm seeing here um, with my screen here. I guess I could always flip this on over here, and I don't know if you can actually see um, basically what you see here, but... November Tingle Hotel, Gore Hotel. November Tingle Hotel is taxi for EFD, POV-1.
All right, what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and switch over to our Medang frequency, which would be kind of like a flight following, like in the States. Give them a quick call, let them know where we are and what our next reporting point is. Medang 120, decimal 1, November Tango Kilo Transfer. Kilo Medang, morning, go ahead. Morning, November Tango Kilo, through the Asa Loka 12000. Estimating overhead my UE36. Seven kilo one two thousand. Every unit is one zero one zero. Call again over my UE. This VHF. No contact. One two six seven. One zero one zero. Call again my UE one two zero decimal one or one two six decimal seven. November Tango Kilo. All right. It's getting a little chilly. It's sixty seven degrees in the cockpit right now, and I think it's below. Yeah, that, it starts getting a bit chilly and your toes start hurting. All right, so, like I said, it, I turned it down 10 notches and it was actually 11, so now we're off just 20 feet, so let me just climb up that extra 20 feet so that we're actually at 1-2000. All right, guys, we are pretty much top of descent now, and I'm going to show you real quick how to set that up on the G-1000. So what we're going to do is come over to our flight plan page and we're going to set this up. I've already set up our altitude right here at a thousand feet, but we're actually going to bring it all the way down to 500 feet because we're pretty much just going to do a straight in approach here. We're going to enter, enter, scroll on down here for our um, target vertical speed coming down. Looks like around a thousand feet for this one. So we're going to go ahead and enter, enter, and we're shortly on top of descent. Now, I know there is another airplane coming out of there, so we're going to let them know where we are. It's an MAF plane, I believe, so Mike Alpha Hotel. Mike Alpha Hotel, 1267 November Tango Kilo, requesting position. Currently, I am 330 miles to run 12,000, top of descent. Copy, we are 290 miles now to the south, at one to the south. All right, have a great day. All right, so they are to the south, so they're actually over that way just a tiny bit. We're going to go ahead and start our descent just by hitting the VS, vertical speed, on down to 1,000. It's actually showing top of descent here in a couple seconds anyways. And we're going to hit the altitude select and the VS at the same time. As our speed is increasing, we're putting in a little bit of left rudder trim. Yeah, so Sir, we're uh, five miles now to the south. We'll uh, fly over the field and turn left down one zero one. Put in a little left rudder trim, or if you want to think of it as taking out rudder trim, because the P factors and everything are less, especially in this plane, you really feel it. In a 152 or a 172 that you might be flying, if you're flying one of those, you're not going to feel it. In this plane, definitely, you're going to have to readjust your rudder trim quite a bit and it's nice having the rudder trim. I flew the, the GA8 with MAF for a little while and it did not have a rudder trim and it really sucked. You had to like consistently on every climb be using your right leg just all the time for the first two weeks my knees would just kill because they weren't used to having constant pressure on pedals at all times and then on descent you always had to have pressure on your left one and just uh, really didn't enjoy that aspect about that airplane. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start our descent checklist. We have a checklist right up here. Let me show you this. Just in case you are curious on what it actually says up here. So first we have the few, uh, selectors and brakes, our talls, yaw damper, our V-ref. That is what we're going to be coming in, our approach speed. Lights and inlet. And Ups and harnesses, flaps, and our flight following. In all stations, we whack November Tango Kilo from Garoka, passing 10,000 zero thousand on descent circuit time. We whack zero six. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our altitude bug all the way down to our 500 feet. Uh, November Tango Zulu, I'm from Local Copida. Kenneth's on the ground, uh, one zero one three. Wind is calm. One zero one three, thank you. November Tango Kilo. 
Okay, so that was just another airplane, sounded like Air New Guinea, letting us know what the area or the local Q and H is. So I've set up my bug for 500 feet right here, and then it shows a little blue arc, and that shows me where I'm actually going to reach that altitude. So we actually want to get there a little bit sooner. So let's bring it on back, and also bring our power back, just so we're not getting over 165. Um, v and E or V and O. Uh, in this plane, they call it V and O. Um, the never exceed speed is 182. So just in case I come into turbulence or something, you know, any turbulence, and we will probably as we come into the the Whale Rock area, there's a couple little small mountains, maybe around two, um, 1,800 feet or so. MSL, we're going to want to be able to be closer to our maneuvering speed, so in case we are starting to encounter some uh, turbulence. Traffic, we make uh, November Tango Kilo, Alpha November Hotel, and double track line up, run it to it. Alpha November Hotel. That way we're closer to our VA from the hotel, start slowing down. So first thing we're going to do is our selectors and brakes, check our brakes, selectors are on. Our TAWS is our train awareness system. We're going to leave it on for now. We turn it off if we're going into a bush location like a, a grass airstrip in the mountains. So Betty doesn't yell at us saying that there's ground coming at us. So both of those are off. We don't use the yaw damper on this plane because the autopilot, the yaw damper portion of the autopilot just sucks and doesn't work. It just sits there and sways the back of the plane back and forth. It's really annoying. Uh, we're going to turn our landing light on and our pulse light. We've got LED taxi lights, so we have a pulse thing, and it's supposed to help with maybe scaring off birds, but it also makes it a little bit easier to see if a plane's coming. And our inertial separator, or what I call is just a bypass because it says bypass and normal. So we put it in bypass to be below 140 knots. So we're at 155 knots right now. We're gonna slow down, we'll get that in a minute. For emergency procedures, if for some reason we had to go around at all, we would power up, pitch for 73, 20 degrees, reset our uh, takeoff power basically to 740, top of the green arc. Pops and harnesses, we can, uh, we can get our harness now. And we'll get our props as we get in closer. Flaps will get closer. And our SAR, or search and rescue, uh, which is just flight following. They call it search and rescue here. Uh, we'll get once we get into the circuit of WeWAC. So we're 17 miles out. We've got six more minutes to go. Let's go ahead and set up our, our approach screen. So we're gonna come over here to our AUX page and it's gonna give us our estimated landing weight, which is 5,150. We're going to come down to our little cheat sheet down here and it's going to give us our takeoff and our landing speeds according to whatever weight it is will give us a different takeoff rotation speed or our, an approach speed that way we can come into the mountain strips as slow as we can comfortably so the lighter we are the slower we can come in so like i said we're close to 5100 just a tiny bit over it so our approach speed will be 61 knots so we're going to bring down here on our VREF, it's 61 knots, look at our advisory, it lets us know that we're getting close to where we're coming. So that is complete. Alright, autopilot is off, we're 4 miles out, we're going to go ahead and put our props forward, Take our switch, we're below 140, we're going to put our inertial separator into bypass, our landing light and pulse light is on. All stations, WeWAC, November, Tango, Kilo, three mile left base, runway 28, WeWAC. And Medang, 1267, November, Tango, Kilo is in the circuit. WeWAC, cancel SAR. November, Tango, Kilo, WeWAC, SAR, what's the matter? November, Tango, Kilo. All right, so search and rescue is done. We're four miles out, below 138 knots. We're going to go ahead and put our first degrees of flaps in and start slowing down. Now we're just turning our left base, or entering our left base for runway 28. Flow 120, we're going to go second notch of flaps, 20 degrees. So I can basically come in the slowest at 61 knots. Really there's no point in coming in that slow. 
especially when it's a big long pavement like this, it, it really just doesn't matter. It's actually a lot harder to keep it at 61 when you're this light. It's easier just to keep it at like 70 plus. So that's what we'll shoot for. Shooting for 500 feet for turning our final. Be a tiny bit less just because we're a little bit closer. Full flaps below 180, 180 knots. 500. Turning our final now, keeping it coordinated. Looks like winds are calm. Right, checklist is complete. Alright, now that we're on the ground, button to beta, don't really need reverse because it's so long, we'll go low idle. Pops up to 20 degrees just to get ready for our next flight, we'll be taking off at 20 degrees and might as well get our trim set up for the next flight as well. So anyways, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching for one, I appreciate it. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think of these type of videos if you'd like to see more. I'm interested in making some more. I would like to make them a lot better. This is my first one of this format, so we'll see how it goes. But share them with other friends, uh, other aspiring pilots or other people that you think that might enjoy this type of content. Uh, share it on your Facebook, whatever. And uh, eventually I'll be making more videos on like actually going into bush locations and things like that. That would be really a little more interesting than just a boring flight VFR from one place to another but uh, I wanted to get used to doing it this way so it's not a distraction and then maybe work into something like that so anyways thanks again for taking the time to watch have a great day